One of the kids the other day in senior high asked me a question. They said, why aren't we writing scripture now? Why did we stop? My answer was, well, I think we are. It's just not called scripture yet. I really personally don't believe that most of the Bible writers, when they were writing, thought, oh, this will be in the Bible someday. You know that line from the musical Superstar? When the disciples are all drunk in the Garden of Gethsemane and they sing, Always thought that I'd be an apostle. Always knew I'd make it if I tried. Now when we retire, we can write the gospel so they'll all talk about us when we die. Yes, it's a joke. Good, you laughed. It's an intentional joke. That's probably not the attitude most Bible writers had. Yes, they were writing to tell their story of faith. The Old Testament writers, hey, most of them were writing before the concept of Torah existed. Yes, they thought their writings would be shared in the community, but the gathering of scriptures into a Bible was probably not something they were thinking of or trying to be included in. They weren't writing to win a contest. They were telling of their faith. And the New Testament writers already had a Bible. It was the Torah and books of the Old Testament. I doubt that they saw their books as being new scripture, even though they certainly felt they were being inspired by the Holy Spirit. Well, back to that conversation I was having with the kids. I did say, well, I've always felt that Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol should be the fifth gospel. Not so much because of theology, it's kind of works-oriented for me, but because it portrays a God of second chances, a God who's willing to believe in us even as we're sinners, a God who sees us for what we, what we will become through the power of this one lying in the manger. I'll be honest, it's been a pretty long six months. For those of you visiting, we're down two pastors. And this sermon, it didn't happen until last night. Even though I've really tried to stay ahead of the game. Thank God for my staff or you'd be watching a video right now. And please don't tell me later that you kind of would have preferred that. <laughs> so last night, I was searching for ideas and I found this assignment created by my daughter in high school on my old computer for an English class. And I share it tonight because I think as we look at this babe in the manger, we recognize that in this event, we see a seed that can lead to transformation. And it's this very transformation that we see in Scrooge that makes me want to declare this book gospel. It's this transformation that makes me want to declare that Scrooge is a modern day Zacchaeus. It's this transformation that tells us all God has brought us joy and the only true response is a response of joy. My daughter's assignment is a letter. And the address is 101 Dreary Lane, London, England, December 25th, 1843. To Mr. Robert Cratchit. Dear Mr. Cratchit, I apologize for the inhumane ways I have treated you and I plan to make up for all those times because you stood by me through them. In the past, I loathed Christmas time and let it affect the way I lived my everyday life. I am aware now of my many wrongful deeds and I hope to make amends. I plan to change my terribly unlikable outlook on life and my rather pathetic attitude toward mankind. I will understand completely if you want to have nothing to do with me. But please, hear me out. Bob, I have been completely condescending and ruthless to you and others. 
I said and did many things I now regret. I scared away a small child who was caroling at the firm by threatening him with a stick. When my nephew, Fred, came to me with an invitation to Christmas dinner, I coldly rejected him. I told the kind men who came collecting for those in need that I do not make merry, so I would not pay petty people to do so. I had the arrogant nerve to look them in the face and say, if the poor would rather die than go to the workhouses, then they should hurry up and do so and decrease the surplus population. Bob, I underpaid you, and I wouldn't even let you add coal to the fire at work to warm you up. I summed it all up by saying that Christmas is a humbug, and I believe that in my heart. I was a bitter old man, and I did not understand how wrong I was about what is really important in life. As all of my wrongdoings have been brought to light, I've realized how terrible I've been. I am learning more about your family and how I unknowingly affect your life. You are a good man, Bob, and a hard worker, and I have underpaid you. I also know that you have a crippled son and need financial help to get him the treatment he needs. I would be honored to be the source of that help. And I especially would be honored because if I had paid you properly, he might have had much healthier surroundings. I deeply regret that I have not helped you before and I am ashamed of the way I've treated you. I've done horrible things. I feel remorseful about the way I've acted toward you and everyone I've come in contact with. You cannot imagine how incredibly sorry I am. And I want you to know I am not that same sad man anymore. I now understand my actions and my words have been inappropriate, unkind, and I am going to make up for it. I shall become a generous and caring human being. I will establish relationships with people and build friendships. I will treat our clients with respect and I will focus more on the good things I can do and less on what will make us the greatest profit. And I say our clients because, Bob, if you will allow me to do so, I will make you a, a partner in my firm. I will make the office a more comfortable workspace and will not overload you. And I will help your son, Tiny Tim, by providing funds for his medical procedures. I shall be alike an uncle for your children and also to my own nephew, Fred, who I've, whom I've harshly regretted and neglected, rather, for so long. I will raise your salary so that you can better support your large family. I will provide for your whole, whole family and give them new clothes, and I will bring your children gifts on birthdays and holidays. I only hope that you will give me this chance to redeem myself. I have acted in a dreadful manner, but I would be so grateful if you could simply forgive me. I was a stingy old man with no compassion, I really have changed and hope you can accept me now. Bob, I hope you can forgive me because you are the closest thing to a friend that I have. Sincerely yours, Ebenezer Scrooge. When I was a boy, I loved Scrooge movies. Mr. Magoo was my first. I think I thought Mr. Magoo was Scrooge for a long time. And then there was the musical version, which was great, and so many others through the years. That, and the Muppets version with Michael Caine is still just a personal favorite, but I digress. As a boy, I was struck by the joy Scrooge on Christmas morning possessed. His realization that he's alive, that, that he's been given that second chance. His declaration, I'm light as a feather, I'm happy as an angel, I'm as merry as a schoolboy. The way he brashly calls a boy in the street to go grab the prized goose at the butcher's shop and have it sent to the Cratchits, over-tipping the boy, of course, in the process. The way he meets the kind men he had earlier rejected in their quest 
to find aid for the poor and then shocks them with the contribution he promises. And the way he then says, there are many back payments there, I assure you. As a boy, I would watch all of this and I'd wonder, what would it mean to allow this day to transform us? And I still ask the question, what would it mean if we would allow the love here in the manger to shine in us throughout our lives? Honestly, the story will always be gospel, a challenge, and a joy to me. It will always have behind it the voice of Christ in my being, asking, where is Christmas right now in your life? The question that started this from the youth, why aren't we writing scripture today? Maybe my answer should have been, I think we all are. Or, at least, I think we should be. And how will we respond to this gift we've been given? This gift of God made human. This gift of grace and boundless love. How will we make our lives a living gospel? Can our lives become a testament to the love of God? I think it's possible. And I think that the attempt could make each of us light as a feather. And I can't think of anything better to do with one's life. God bless us. Everyone.